I gotta be honest with you guys. I filmed my big return video last week, posted it, and it was really long, over an hour, but I pretty much made that video with the intention of catching up and making up for the month that I had lost um, when I took my time off, and yeah, I covered TV shows, movies, wrestling, and very, various different things uh, regarding professional wrestling, and just basically getting myself caught up on everything that uh, I, I missed in the month that I was gone. So then I was like, all right, I'm back, I got my schedule ready, and I can get back into the habit of doing videos. Thursday night rolls around, and I go to, you know, try and come up with something for this and film something. I got nothing. And it was at that moment that it dawned on me, I was like, oh my god, I covered so much in my return video that I have nothing to talk about in the one that follows it. And I was scrambling for ideas. Uh, you know, there was the speculation that Sting's going to be on Raw this week or because of the cryptic tweet that Sting sent or whatever. And it was like, yeah, I could talk about that, but I don't really want to talk about Sting going to the WWE until it actually happens so I could respond to it rather than speculate on it. Um, so I didn't really want to talk about that. Um, I haven't seen any new movies, so I didn't have any like reviews to do. Uh, I wanted to see Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I've heard it's amazing. Uh, and I'm excited to see it, but I, that's going to come next weekend. So got nothing nothing for you on the movie side of things. Um, I did get uh, the James Bond collection uh, at a very low price. Uh, so I have the all the James Bond movies, and I've been watching some of those, but I don't think anybody wants me to review every single James Bond movie. Um, and if I was going to do that, I would do it in the same way that I reviewed all the Godzilla movies. But uh, I'm not saying I am going to do that. I'm just saying I, I, if I were going to, that's how I would. Although I'm still debating whether or not I should actually subject myself to die another day again. But... We shall see. <laughs> but yeah, I don't really want to talk about that. Um, I guess I could also preview Battleground, but that's still got another week to go. And I usually like to do pay-per-view previews after the last Raw, before the pay-per-view, because that's when you pretty much get the full image of what the show's going to be like. So, uh, didn't really want to preview Battleground yet, although the card is shaping up fairly nicely, uh, giving us good grudge matches that make sense from a storyline perspective, and also giving us, you know, matches involving great workers that can put on good matches, or both, uh, you know, like the Seth Rollins-Dean Ambrose match. I think the weakest part of the card is actually the main event, because we all know Cena's going to win, because uh, it's going to be Cena and Lesnar at SummerSlam, so nobody, I mean, there's no reason to really get invested in it, and it has no drama to it at all whatsoever, and then putting a world title match on this pay-per-view just feels obligatory, and... Like, it feels like there's no reason for this match to even exist, but whatever. <laughs> um, you know, Cena's gonna win. We know. We know. Um, so, yeah, I didn't want to talk about that yet. Uh, TNA, I guess I could have talked about that, but the New York shows haven't started airing yet. I believe they start next week. And, you know, Destination X hasn't kicked in or anything like that. So, I'll have more to talk about on the TNA side of things when all that stuff starts happening. Um... NXT, I'm still watching that, but no major developments have happened. Not enough to warrant carrying an entire video, anyway. Uh, I thought the tag team main event on this week's NXT was pretty good. You know, if that counts for anything. But again, no major storyline developments that would warrant uh, me spending an entire video talking about NXT. I'm still enjoying the show, it's just that I have, I have nothing uh, huge to talk about. Um, so I was kind of stuck. I really had nothing to talk about in my follow-up video after my return. I was like, oh shit, I got nothing. Um, I actually considered uh, going ahead and doing my question and answers video right away. But I don't really want to do that because I want to give everybody another chance or give them as many chances as possible and as much time as possible to post questions, which, yes, I'm doing a question and answers video. If you haven't heard about that yet or if you haven't posted a question yet, Post them down below in the comments section. Everybody gets one wrestling question, one non-wrestling question each. And that's how that will work. But I probably won't post that for another two or three weeks. So you'll have a long time to post questions in the meantime. But um, something kind of fell into my lap this weekend. Kenta has signed with the WWE. That's fascinating. It's like, all right, I can talk about that. 
And I'm not saying I'm the biggest expert on Japanese wrestling or I'm completely knowledgeable or I'm a walking encyclopedia about Japanese wrestling, but I do know the difference between Kenta Kobayashi and Kenta Kabashi, so I've got that going for me. <laughs> but in all seriousness, uh, Kenta is a very good talent and very... Uh, is an interesting one for the WWE to pick up because they normally don't pick up guys like that. They normally uh, kind of stick to their own developmental system. And it's only been recently in the last few years that they've really uh, pulled some guys from the indie scene and really tried to make big stars out of it. I mean, that's a, like the Daniel Bryans and the Seth Rollins. I mean, that's a fairly new thing for the WWE. Normally those guys wouldn't have gotten the big opportunities in, in the actual, in the big, uh, you know, WWE. Um, so, you know, they've really kind of advanced themselves, and I've always felt like wrestling needs more diversity. If you're going to put together a roster, you need more diversity. And I don't mean wrestling diversity, or I mean, I don't mean racial diversity. I do mean, like, you know, characters and looks and in-ring styles and all that stuff. And Kenta, um, is a great talent that works a completely different style and comes from a completely different background from what the normal WWE star normally comes from. So, uh, I think this is a fascinating pickup for them. It'll be interesting to see how Kenta ultimately fits in. I assume he's going to go through NXT first. I've heard that that's how they're going to do it. Um, which I wouldn't mind watching him interact with certain guys. Like, I, I think him and Adrian Neville could probably have a really good match. I think him and Tyler Breeze would be so polar opposite of each other. I think they could do something great there. Obviously, him and Sami Zayn could have a great match. So, uh, there's a lot of things that they could do over with him in NXT, and... Ultimately, when they move him up to the main roster, uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see if Kent is able to adjust to the WWE style and adjusting to working the way that they want him to work because that's also been a struggle for guys like Ultimo Dragon didn't really fit in with the WWE not only because he's not he's I mean Ultimo Dragon is the type of guy that the WWE almost never goes after. And he got to the WWE, and they clearly didn't want to do anything with him. But then he also struggled. So he struggled adjusting to that WWE style. And I'm not saying that Ultimo Dragon's a piece of shit. He's not. He's not at all. It's just that working that more kind of formulaic uh, WWE style is very, very hard for some guys to do. Mystico couldn't do it. And they wanted to make a big star out of him. I mean, I remember when they first signed him, and that was a really big deal. And... Uh, they actually did try to make a big star out of Mystico through the whole Sin Cara gimmick and all the vignettes and everything that they did, and they they had him tagged with John Cena, so it was, it was clear that they wanted to make a big star out of him, but it just didn't click, and he looked uncomfortable in the ring, and it wasn't the style of match that he was accustomed to working, and uh, I don't, you know, Kenta's going to have some of those problems too, not to the degree, I hope, but it is going to be an adjustment for him, so... Again, it'll be interesting to track his growth and development through uh, through him being immersed in the WWE system. And then there's the question of whether or not they're going to want to do anything with him and make a big deal out of him. We shall see. That's something we have to wait and see. Like I said, the WWE's track record with some foreign talents has not been very good. Uh, but, you know, since Triple H has taken on a bigger role within the company, it seems like they've wanted to try and experiment with new things and try and be different and there's been some very unvince like things going on like bruno going into the hall of fame never thought that would have ever happened but triple h gets a big bigger role backstage and all of a sudden he's able to make these type of things happen so i, I do think kenta going to the wwe is very interesting i think he's a great talent to pick up it's just a question of whether or not he's going to be able to adjust and whether or not the wwe is going to want to do anything with him or put him in a position to let him succeed. I mean, if he goes out there and he's like a stereotypical Japanese... I'm trying to think of some offensive Japanese stereotype. He goes out there and he's dressed like a ninja. Let's say. It's probably not going to work. Or a samurai. That would be even better. Have him go out there dressed as a samurai because he's Japanese and he has to do that. Which, again, to further not Transformers 4, thank you for having Ken Watanabe voice a robot that looks like a samurai. That's totally not racist at all. And he calls Optimus Prime Sensei and everything because he's Asian and he has to do those things. Thank you, Michael Bay. But... Whatever. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, that's pretty much all I got. I do again. This is a pretty big headline, and it is um, an interesting piece of news. And I am uh, fascinated in seeing 
how Kenta ultimately uh, fits into the WWE product because he's not the type of talent that they usually go for. So um, it will be interesting. I am looking forward to seeing what happens. Um, again, uh, approaching it with some apprehension because I do know the WWE's past. I know how a lot of these guys usually turn out. But, uh, you know, it, it'll be fun to follow if nothing else. And at least they're trying to invest in something a little bit different besides trying to create their own cookie cutter guys over and over and over again so um so yeah kent is going to the wwe and uh, hopefully it turns into something really good but that's all i have for now again i'm sorry i didn't have a whole lot to talk about but like i said i really struggled to find a topic and the kenta thing uh kind of fell into my lap so whew, uh, crisis averted um, but that's all I have for now. I will be back next week to talk about Battleground and any other major developments that take place. And, uh, yeah, so until then, I will see you all later. Enjoy your week.